Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Leeson, and welcome as ESPN Classic presents Game 4 of the 1992 Stanley Cup Finals between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Chicago Blackhawks. Pittsburgh owns a commanding 3-0 lead in the best of seven series thanks to the airtight defense of goalie Tom Barrasso, who has given up just two goals in his last 148 minutes, 24 seconds, as ESPN's Jimmy Roberts reports in his vintage Game 4 preview. It starts with Tom Barrasso, who has given legitimacy to the old adage that hot goaltending in the playoffs is what it takes. But this is a Penguins team whose defense during the regular season was at worst awful and best disinterested. However, come the cup final, defense is foremost, even for Mr. Offense. It's tough uh, during the season to do that for 80 games. We don't have that type of team. Uh, but uh, come uh, crunch time, I think we're able to do that and uh, give Tony uh, uh, more help back then. So just how have the Penguins been able to drop their goals against from a regular season average of almost four per game to less than two during the Blackhawks series? Uh, we've played tight, and we've got, uh, as, as a defenseman, we've got a lot of support from our forwards. They've made our job a lot easier. Our high forward is always back in a position to, to, to pick up a guy so we don't get caught three on twos. Every period before we go, we're dressing, we're saying, make sure we have a man high, make sure we get the puck out. We're, we stress defense more than, you hardly ever see us say, well, if we get a two-on-one, let's go high. I mean, you say that, but it's more team defense. But you can't win the race unless your car has the right parts. So the front office tinkered with the machine. Out went offensive-oriented players like Recky and Coffey. In came Tockett and Shell Samuelson. It was like giving a tune-up to the car that won Indy. We felt in the changes that we made, we were helping our defensive capabilities and adding some physical presence to our lineup, but still not giving up any offense. This Penn's Blackhawks matchup in Chicago was the first ever NHL game played in the month of June. Later, we'll look at the international flavor on the Penguins roster. But now, let's head to game four of the 1992 Stanley Cup Finals between Pittsburgh and Chicago, right here on ESPN Classic. Welcome to Chicago Stadium, home to the Chicago Blackhawks, host to the Pittsburgh Penguins, and site of Game 4 of the 1992 Stanley Cup Finals. With Pittsburgh leading the series three games to none, we join the call just before the opening faceoff here on ESPN Classic. And Eddie Van Helleman working in the finals for the 16th straight season. Sweet Knox and Ray Scampanella will be the two linesmen. Don Koharski, the backup tonight. Tom Barrasso, the starting goaltender for the Pittsburgh Penguins. What a 15 and 5 and a 2.71 goals against average. He now has the top save percentage in the NHL in the playoffs. 0.911. Eddie Belfour, record of 12 and 4, 2.36 goals against average. And the puck drop. Mario Lemieux out here with Kevin Stevens and Rick Tockett. And the Penguins steer it up towards the Hawks line. Red center will take the man of the biscuit. He's out here with Stefan Matteau and Dirk Rea. And the Hawks' Chris Chelios comes up. Stevens will belt him, and off the puck he goes, and it's on to the Penguin line. And Roberts avoids a check by Dirk Graham. Here's Stevens up into the Chicago win, trying to get to the loose puck. Chelios lost his stick, but the Hawks steer it to center, and it's Dirk Graham. Right back into the Penguins' end, and Brett Tocca steers it up. Here's Lemieux with Stevens open on the left wing. We'll give it to him. Back to Mario. Left wing circle. Shoots it right on Bell for the save. As Lemieux let the shot go from the left wing circle. And cleared away off the boards and back up into Penguin real estate. And the Hawks are called for icing here in the first minute of play. Well, Lemieux with the first scoring chance for either club here. In the first uh, moments of play in game number four of the Stanley Cup final round. You see Pierre Maguire with his hand on top of his head. Not because he doesn't have a lot of hair up there, but because he's signaling to his uh, team that they have to make a line change. That's his hand signal to uh, the guys on the ice that it's time to make a change. He changes the defense for Scotty Bowman. Scotty Bowman. And Mike Keenan both realized that you can't get this job done unless you have the horses. And Keenan said that before this series, but uh, there aren't many guys who get the horses in position to win the race the way Scotty Bowman does. He's the greatest at it in the history of the game. Scotty going for a sixth Stanley Cup. One five with the Montreal Canadiens. He was involved in a couple of sweeps also with that Montreal club. Here's Buskis defensively. Roney line out here with Larmer and Jocelyn Lemieux. For the Chicago Blackhawks, and they spin it to the Penguins in. Barrasso will leave it. But Paul Stander is having a hit. Here to the near side. Picked up by Sean McEachern. Tries to clear it out. Marshman gets the puck. Swinging in between the circles. Now Ronnie Francis drops it right back to center. Rod Buskis will put it down the boards. Intercepted by Alf Samuelson. He gives it right to Rod Buskis, a former pen. 
and he drills it in behind the Pittsburgh goal. Stand defensively, works it up the wood, and it caroms back into the Chicago ice. I think Robbie Brown could have played that puck, and they ruled that he could have, so there'll be no icing. Robbie, the former Penguin, also leaving the uh, puck for Brian Marchman. Marchman's pass on to center, intercepted by Jimmy Pack. And to Shell Samuelson, the Penguins whack it right back into the Chicago net area. Eddie Belfour leaves it near side. Your armor, Yager. Maloney and Trotty in the trio. Yager with a shot. He shoots and scores from the right wing circle. And the Penguins take a 1 0 lead. Oh, scratch my back with a hacksaw. What a vicious wrist shot by Yarmir Yager. And the Penguins take an early 1 0 lead here in Chicago. First goal for Yager in the series since that tremendous goal he scored in the third period of game one. He just circled off the boards. Troy Loney made a beeline down the boards to pop the puck loose. Yager picked it up, walked out, and snapped it. Remember the stick glove of Eddie Belfour. Yager does not pull the trigger that often with a wrist shot in that situation, but he had a lot of net to work with, and he put it in off the far post. Number 11 in the playoffs uh, for Yarmer Yager, and the Penguins have a 1 0 lead. The only assist to Troy Loney of Pittsburgh, and the Penguins jump out to a 1 0 advantage here against the Blackhawks. And the Penguins set it up on their own end, and Larry Murphy throw it ahead of the Chicago zone. It went right over the head of Belfour and into the seats, and we'll take a timeout. 18-13 left here in the first period. Pittsburgh won, Chicago nothing. In game four on the Penguins Hockey Network. New Bud Light Lime. The easy drinking taste of Bud Light with a splash of 100% natural lime flavor. Bud Light Lime, now available in Canada. Imagine. 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 Lotto 649's next jackpot is $3.5 million. The new JVC Averio hard drive camcorders. The only hard drive camcorder built with ease in mind. Share your videos online with one touch upload to YouTube for easy sharing. With a Vario hard drive camcorders, you can carry your videos everywhere you go with easy export to your iTunes library. The all new JVC of Vario hard drive camcorders. The perfect experience, JVC. There are millions of mortgages in Canada. If you have one, you have a Manulife One number. Take Mike, for example. Mike and his wife Sarah have a mortgage, line of credit, car loan, and several savings and checking accounts. Simply by combining all their inefficient accounts into the revolutionary Manulife One, Mike calculated they could save $46,980 in interest and own their home years sooner. Discover your Manulife One number today at manulifeone.ca. They lay claim to the curve, the rise, twist, demanding nothing less than more, refusing to compromise joy in the name of practicality. We build cars for people like that. We are people like that. Well, last year, Yager finished the playoff with 13 points, already he has 24 this season he had three goals and he has 11 now in this playoff year right and the puck driven to the Chicago end. Chelios back to uh, play the puck to Jocelyn Lemieux Lemieux on to center red going to the penguin line he'll bring it down drop it up to Brent Sutter and he shoots it it was deflected by Lemieux and up into the seats and out of play well, regardless of what the penguins do here tonight whether they win the Stanley Cup or uh, should lose this game and force a fifth game the penguins will not be arriving at the uh, Greater Pittsburgh Airport. Just to uh, let you folks know early that, uh, uh, due to the complications last year with uh, with uh, so many people and uh, the problems that they had in the parking lots and all, they've asked us to nicely uh, refrain from that and plan for a big party should the Penguins win the uh, Stanley Cup. And there's Yager's shot again, so they will not be arriving at the Greater Pittsburgh Airport. So sit where you are and relax and enjoy yourself. Because they will not be through tonight. There's Yarmer Yager on the ice. He does that quite a bit at the Civic Arena. Comes on the ice in his uh, tennis shoes before the game. And just fires the puck around, has a good time. He can't get enough ice time, whether it's on his shoes or on his skates. He's the last guy off every day in practice, too. Steve Smith, center ice of the Penguins in, comes down with a backhand shot. That's blocked by Murphy, the Penguin defenseman, and it's lifted back to center to Rick Tockett. 
Tockett was a nine game scoring streak the longest in the playoffs this year. And that's been matched uh, by a couple of other players. And it's a shot and deflected up into the seats. And Rick Tockett having himself a great Stanley Cup uh, playoff year. The right winger acquired from Philadelphia. And out with a separated shoulder early on in the playoffs, but he's rebounded and come through very nicely. Mario Lemieux at center leading everybody in the playoffs with uh, 31 points in the scoring uh, derby. Mario was held scoreless in game three. Of course, the fans had the only only goal of the game, and that was by Kevin Stevens. Bob McKenzie of the Hockey News, he used to be with the Hockey News, now the Toronto Star, actually asked Scotty Bowman today, how about your big players? How, what do you think of the fact that the guys who are big players haven't performed as well in this series? And he referred to Lemieux and Scotty said, Mario Lemieux? He's been our best defensive player. And what about the couple goals he scored in game two? Not to mention the game winner in game one. Brent Sutter now stepping to the uh, Penguin line, intercepting and talking. Plays it back to the Chicago stripe. Rod Buskis wind it over. Yarmy Yager giving Pittsburgh an early 1-0 lead here in this game as the Penguins are trying to close it out here tonight. Buskis around the net to Dirk Graham. Going to Brent Sutter. He is hit. Loose in front. Marchman can't make the plug. <coughs> Still loose. And Buskis back into the corner. Graham trying to put it in front. Bounced up over the head of Lasso and grabbed by Lemieux. And he is hit. Knocked down. A high stick. Right on the play. The uh, puck hit it. Lemieux was knocked down by Chelios. And we'll return 1707 left here in period number one. The Penguins won. The Hawks nothing on the Penguins Hockey Network. Hi, this is Chuck Storm. I'm live at the scene where last night there was a robbery at about 3.30 in the morning. Now, police have... Oh. Oh. CyberClean, the revolutionary cleaning compound for high-tech equipment. Deep clean all your electronics with ease. CyberClean removes dust and debris on contact. Just press it on and the dirt is gone. The science of clean is CyberClean. You can do the right thing. Call home for the right thing. Don't drink and drive. Designated driver. Pull an overnighter. you arrive alive for more than 20 years. Arrive alive. Drive sober. This summer, Ford wants you to experience the best vehicles we've ever built. So we're inviting you to take the Drive One Challenge. We believe that once you drive a Ford, you won't want to drive anything else. And with employee pricing, you'll pay what we pay. But if we still haven't won you over and you buy a competitive vehicle, we'll give you $100. To take the Drive One Challenge, plus get your employee price, visit your local Ford store. This offer ends soon, so come in today. There are millions of mortgages in Canada. If you have one, you have a Manulife One number. Take Mike, for example. Mike and his wife, Sarah, have a mortgage, line of credit, car loan, and several savings and checking accounts. Simply by combining all their inefficient accounts into the revolutionary Manulife One, Mike calculated they could save $46,980 in interest and own their home years sooner. Discover your Manulife One number today at manulifeone.ca. We, we just, the Bears are what we thought they were. What, what, what we thought they were. We played them in preseason. Who the hell takes a third game in a preseason like We played them in the third game. Everybody played three quarters. The Bears are who we thought they were. That's why we took the damn field. Now, if you want to crown them, then crown their ass. But they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. You're watching game four of the 1992 Stanley Cup Finals between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Chicago Blackhawks right here on ESPN Classic. Mario Lemieux, I asked him after the game in game three if his back had been bothering him, and he said no. He spun away. He felt Chelios coming, but I, he said his hand was bothering him quite a bit in that last game, which would explain why he didn't take a lot of faceoffs. Lemieux has such great vision. He just felt Chelios coming there as he played the puck out. He was able to spin away from the hit. And there was some thought as to whether or not they might freeze that hand here tonight. I don't know if they did or not, but uh, well, the Hawks are going to use Brian Marchman up on the left wing here in this line. 
with Brent Sutter and Dirk Graham. So Marshman will play left wing. And he has a goal in this series to Brent Sutter. Snap one off. Barrasso makes that save. And chopped around to the near wing. And Larry Murphy feeds it on through to center red. Kelly has played it off Lemieux's stick and up into the seats. And the faceoff will take place at center ice. Chris Chelios explained his actions against Larry Murphy the other night as an effort to get a whistle so that uh, the puck uh, having been won by the Penguins would not be shot into an empty net. He wanted to get a stoppage in play. And that was his explanation. Ryan Marchman's going to be a good player for the Blackhawks for a while. He's only 23 years old. Pretty good trade for the Hawks. For First the round draft Jets. choice of the Winnipeg Jets. Yep. been some talk here in Chicago whether or not Mike Keenan will continue coaching he is the general manager and coach of this hockey club Daryl Sutter the assistant has made it known that he wants the head job and if he doesn't get it here he's going to try and move on and there's been talk that Daryl Sutter is uh, one of the leading candidates should Keenan continue to coach for the Los Angeles Kings vacancy Stefan Matteau in the near side of the Chicago zone and Dick Ford Francis trying to work it free does in the corner but Grant to Kuchera the Chicago defenseman steps up through his own zone Onto the red line now, and he's checked from behind by McEachern. Poke it through to the Penguin net. Barrasso will leave it for Rolf Samuelson. Cutting to the left of the goal, and tap it ahead of center to Ronnie Francis. Francis looking for McEachern. He's into the Chicago end. McEachern tried to feed it over to Bork, cut off by Steve Larmer. He gave it away to Jimmy Pack, and Pack now will wrap it right back into the Chicago end. And Steve Smith, defensively for the Blackhawks, finding Kuchera out to center to Ronick. Ronick wheeling deal into the Penguin zone. He has not been able to score in this series. The Penguins have done a tremendous job against the big line. Loney knocking. Uh, Ronick uh, for a little loop there as uh, Loney stepped into him. Play has stopped and uh, nothing will result here. Jeremy Ronick in the series has no points. Michel Goulet, the normal left winger on that line for quite a bit of time, has one goal and Larmer has one assist. That's it. And Loney put the right arm on the back of Ronick and was able to Push him down to the ice towards the boards in front of the Penguin bench, and the crowd looking for a penalty against Loney. Chelios is going to shoot it in. He's playing the left side of the fence as they bring him now on with Buskus. So Chicago's Mike Keenan really pulling out all stops here tonight, as you might expect, in an effort to try and get his club going. Uh, they're going to break up Steve Smith and use Chelios here on the left side of the fence with Rod Buskus. Hawks have uh, Goulet, and he's going to come off here. And they'll put Ronick out with Dirk Graham and Jocelyn Lemieux. And Mario Lemieux stays here at center with Bob Airy and Yarmer Yager. So Lemieux doing a little double shifting of his own. Way back to the Hawks in a 1 0 Pittsburgh lead in the first period. Yarmer Yager scoring in 137 of the opening period and tapped ahead up the right wing boards of the Penguin zone. And Gordy Roberts will get it up to Lemieux. He's shouldered by Jeremy Ronick. And Burke Graham starts right back on the Penguin line, and he drills it in. Carrasso's going to clear it away from the net, coming off the near wing. Yager tried to clear. He was hit heavily by Ronick. Chelios got the puck, and Yager got hurt in that play, but he's slow in getting up and back on. Ronick really bubbled him into the board. Huskis has to return to the Chicago wing to take him out of the puck. Outlet pass. Ronick looked up. He saw Loney, and now waxed Loney as he went by him from behind. And I'll tell you one thing. Ronick was looking for Loney that time. He put a devastating check on Yarmer Yager, but the fans have his number also, and it's cleared by Pittsburgh up the length of the ice, and Chelios will touch it, and icing called against the Penguins. If you're going to use fire, and that's uh, certainly uh, Ronick is capable of that, one of the better hitters in the league for his size at 170 pounds, but he's got to be aware that he's going to get banged back, and he was in that situation, and although they were making a line change, he looked up to see who was around before he made that fight, and then he turned, and he whacked Loney as he went off the ice. Brian Trottier with Yuri Herdina. Uh, and Troy Loney. So early on, Scotty Bowman getting a lot of people involved in the game in this first period. And Shelly also will pair up here now with Igor Kravchuk. Kravchuk will work the right point. Kravchuk shoots it right down low. A good save. Rebound. Briss will stop it right in front on Steve Larmer. Larmer had a chance on the rebound right in front, but he couldn't get a by Barrasso. And the Penguins remain in the lead, 1-0. Well, he asked Barrasso about that glove hand that was so successful the other night. And he said that uh, when I'm doing that, that's a sign that I'm seeing the puck extremely well. 
He said yesterday he was interviewed extensively at the hotel. The media came over to the Penguins Hotel. And he, he said that uh, what he's learned over the years in this league is the ability to win and play well despite the fact that he's not seeing the puck well or that he doesn't feel good on a particular night. So that's the key to success is being able to fight through that stuff. And that's what he's learned to do in the years he's been in the league. And Tommy said before game three he really didn't feel all that comfortable. Didn't think he had a good warm up. But all of a sudden he got in and it was right there. Trippier shoots it back to the Chicago goal. Loney looks for the puck. It comes off the near corner. And you're here. Dino will shoot it in behind the Chicago net. Pittsburgh leading one nothing. That's the same score they won by here in game three. Stand up the right side. Shoots it towards a goal. Blocked off a skate. And the Hawks will take it in counterattack. Long shot by Larmer. Avoids Tom Barrasso in the Penguin net. It slams off the glass to the near side. On the Kiram, Herdina looks for the puck. Rolf Samuelson over there. Putting some pressure on one of the Hawks. Trying to keep him pinned in the corner. That's Larmer. And still fighting for the puck will be the Penguins. And they get it out back to center ice. Into Chicago territory, and Chelios coming back to play the puck. On to center ice, and it's grabbed now by Ronick. Ronick back on the ice surface, gets the puck to Chelios, and Chelios turns around, avoiding a check by Kevin Stevens, and on to Stefan Mateau. Right wing pass. Here's Graham into the Penguins. They come to the back end, stop, rebound, score! Kirk Graham got his own rebound back, and the Chicago Blackhawks have tied the game in one. I'll tell you, that was dangerously close to being an offside play there. But the Hawks get the tying goal. Dirk Graham finally gets one by Barrasso here in Chicago, and the Hawks have tied the game. Barrasso stopped the first shot. The rebound came out and hit a skate or something, went right back into the net. I'd like to see that one again. Matteau, the man who made the play to him. Graham appeared oh, to be way in. I'm telling the you, the offense was on when he got it. Barrasso made the save. He got his own rebound and put it in. Good play by Graham, but he looked like he was. 10 feet over the blue line when that puck was sent over the line by Matteau. Well, I wish we had a different angle at it, but I do not believe, I, I just don't think he was onside. Here's Lemieux now, and talking to meet up. Lemieux to the right side of Kevin Stevens, cuts around in on Buskis, backhander, he shoots and scores! Kevin Stevens gets it right back. Oh, look out, Loretta! The Penguins have taken the lead, 2-1. to one. Lemieux to Stevens, and the Penguins answer that goal, coming right back to cash in at 6.33, 12 seconds after Graham had scored. And this saw Mike Keenan's lips, Dominic. And here comes Dominic Hasek, the Czechoslovakian goaltender. Lemieux pushed it over, a little saucer pass to Stevens. He cut in on the backhand. Belfort was lunging for that puck again with a stick, and right through the five hole. He did not play that one at all. Belfort looks as if he's fighting the puck again. And that'll be all for him, at least for now. Keenan has been known to play musical goaltenders and send his goalies back in after pulling him in situations like this. Now, Dirk Graham's goal for the Blackhawks, his fifth of the playoffs, second of the series. At 621, Mateau assisting. That was at 621, and a dozen seconds later, Kevin Stevens notches his 13th of the playoffs. Mario Lemieux has one assist. Chelios also assisting on that goal by Graham. And the backhander by Stevens giving the Penguins the advantage again. And David Hasek feeds his first action here in this series. For years, Hasek was considered the best goaltender in Europe. He has appeared in two playoff games this year. 0-1 with a 2.31 goals against average. And this young guy is going to come on for the Blackhawks. He plays that butterfly style also. And he'll also put that stick flush to the ice, lay it down across his pads to block shots uh, between the legs and the style is similar to Eddie Belfour's in that regard. Asik was an 11th round draft choice of the Blackhawks back in 1983 when it wasn't real fashionable to draft people. Now in front here's Graham tying the game as he got open in front. And Dirk Graham gets his second and we're off and running again. We're tied at two. Do you believe this? Three goals in less than a minute. Dirk Graham gets his second and his sixth of the playoffs and it is 2-2. The Hawks 51. were looking for 30 seconds, three goals. Mike Keenan thought that his team would be able to uh, play a little looser here tonight and generate more offense. That was a good pass off the boards to Graham, and all he had to do was one time and into the net. I'll tell you, the guy that's putting things up on the scoreboard doesn't even have time to punch him into the computer. They're coming so fast. Chilio sliding the puck over to Graham, and the Hawks have made it 2-2. Well, here we go. 
The left point, Igor Kravchuk, swing it over the right side. And the Penguins in an oh, Samuelson will bounce it up ice back into the Chicago zone, and Hasek will play the puck for the first time tonight. The Chicago goaltender dumps it back to center. Ronick runs into Paul Stanton. Penguins and Hawks tied at two here in the second, the uh, first period. On to the right wing of the Penguins in. Noonan shoots one, and that'll miss the Penguin net. Third off the near boards, and Igor Kravchuk put it behind the net. Samuelson knocked down on one of the Hawks. It was Brian Noonan. Chicago's going to get a power play. And the Hawks have a man advantage. Joel Samuelson will be penalized. An interference call will return. Tied to two on the Penguins Hockey Network. What's that? It's a uh, blueberry bloom donut from Tim's. Ooh. Take a piece and dip. Okay. It, you're not a double dipper, right? No, no. So you're not a two-timing dunktress? Huh? A second chance soaker? It's not even really a, a thing. Because it's it's one dipper trick. Okay, I, I get it. One scoop. The single scooper. Enjoy our new blueberry baked goods, like the blueberry bloom donut. Always a great value. Always Tim Hortons. Friday on Real Classics. I just haven't gotten the break I need. You have an opportunity here. You might call it the opportunity of a lifetime. Own ownership. Part of the media rights, the gambling revenues, the works. How many times are you going to have to get your head handed to you? Sooner or later, they're going to kill somebody. The man wants a show, man. Really. Guess we'll have to give him one. Chris Klein, LL Cool J, and Rebecca Romaine star in the real classic Rollerball. Only on ESPN Classic. The Craft Celebration Tour is set. Congratulations to our 10 winning communities. Each of the winning towns will receive a $25,000 community refresh from Kraft. From August 22nd to August 31st, Sports Center will be broadcasting live from their towns. To learn more about the 10 winning communities, log on to tsn.ca slash Kraft Celebration Tour. The Kraft Celebration Tour, 10 great towns in 10 summer days. Brought to you by Kraft Salad Dressing. Pure flavor, pure Kraft. New Bud Light Lime with a splash of 100% natural lime flavor. Well, Montreal native Mario Lemieux and American-born Kevin Stevens were two of Pittsburgh's most recognizable stars. The Penguins' list of foreign imports during the early 1990s included Jarmer Jager from the Czech Republic, Kiel and Ulf Samuelsson from Sweden, and Jim Pack from South Korea. ESPN's Jimmy Roberts examines the heavy international flavor in the Penguins' locker room in this Vintage Sports Center report from 1992. The United Nations. In diplomacy, it's in New York. But in sports, it may well be in Pittsburgh, where interviews are routinely held in Swedish. Where the Penguins have the league's only Asian player. We're just getting back to uh, Korea, and it's real exciting for them to see, uh, see myself playing, uh, playing in the NHL. And where the mother tongue of the primary scoring line of Lemieux, Jager, and Stevens is either French, Czechoslovakian, or English, depending on just whose tongue is doing the talking. If they shadow me, you got Jaeger that can pick up the puck and make some plays and be the guy one-on-one. -on -one. You got Kevin that can do the same thing, and it's pretty tough to defend against, uh, um, you know, three pretty good players on the ice at the same time. What was that? It's been good luck. I need it. I need it into serious. He's worked hard to learn English, and now, you know, you can go out in the ice and you can tell him what to do, and he can tell you what he wants to do, and you don't have that problem of uh, communication with him anymore. You guys all understand each other? I, I think I understand him. I don't know how, if he understood me. I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. He understand me. No interpretation is necessary for Yager to understand that he has become something of a cult figure, especially amongst teenage girls. He loves heavy metal music and his new car. But there is a serious, mature side as well. He wears 68, in memory of the Russian invasion of his homeland in that turbulent year. It was four years before his birth in 1972, but still, he has been told. Yeah, I lost my parents and everybody. It was very sad. Maybe it's appropriate that language isn't the common bond for this sterling line. After all, words don't always do justice to just what they do on the ice. Reporting from Pittsburgh, I'm Jimmy Roberts, ESPN.
Yager won the Hart Trophy as league MVP in 1999 and was runner-up three other times. Later, we'll examine Chicago defenseman Chris Chelios. But now, let's return to the Blackhawks and the Penguins. Game four of the 1992 Stanley Cup Finals on ESPN Classic. Hawks get the first power play opportunity of the game. This crowd really involved now. And the other night with the Penguins being able to score the only goal of the hockey game, they were able to keep them quiet throughout the game. And now we're getting a real taste of what the crowd can mean to the Hawks here in Chicago. Well, Chicago has just one power play goal and 12 chances against the Penguins in this series. All seamless on the interference call at 7.28. Well, the Penguins turned the puck over in their own end, and Chelios was able to throw it right back to the net to Graham. Ronick, Larmer, and Noonan up front for the Hawks on the power play, top of the circle, right side of the Penguins in, and Chelios and Crabchuck, the two-point men. And Ronnie Francis and Mario Lemieux, the two penalty killers. And it's pulled to the right point of the Penguins in over to Chelios now, center point, shoots one deflected in Lemieux. We'll steer it up the sideboards and up into the Chicago net area. Dominic Hasek stops a play for defenseman Igor Kravchuk working the points out here. Archelios and Kravchuk. And Chris Chelios, who has set up both Hawks goals, played up the corner boards. Neroni goes behind the net, turns, and he can't spin it around in front. Somebody got a piece of it. Over to the right side of the Penguins in the Kravchuk. Kravchuk bank it in behind the Penguin net. It comes near side to Jeremy Roenick. Roenick, the Larmer of Chicago, tries to center, and Shell Samuelson whacked that by Noonan. Pressured back in the corner, and he made a good play to help keep the puck in. Larmer off the right side. And it's off his stick and right to Mario Lemieux. And Lemieux comes up, and he'll flip it up to center ice. On the move, Larry Murphy has it to the Chicago line. And Murphy's hit from behind by Chelios. A penalty coming up again. Chelios elbowed him. What's going on with Chelios? And Larry Murphy. Chelios just flattened him from behind with an elbow. Blindsided him. Good, knocked gracious. him out cold. He's out cold, I think. Give me a break. You're on a power play. I mean, that, he wasn't after him, according to Chelios in the last game, but this is, I mean, you're on a power play. Oh. Eight seventeen. the time of the... Elbowing penalty to Chris Chelios. So there'll be an equal strength for a minute and 11 seconds, and Chelios in the penalty box. And the Hawks fail to score in their first power play opportunity with Alf Samuelson off. Game tied at two. Murphy taken to the Penguin bench. Elbows are something that Chris Chelios is famous for. Or infamous might be a better word. And Phil Bork now on for the Penguins with Bob Airy. Graham's over talking to uh, Van Helleman, I guess, pleading the fact that he didn't get the arm up into him, but uh, it looked as though he got the arm, uh, the uh, shoulder, the uh, elbow right into the back of his head. So the uh, faceoff will be in the Chicago zone with 11.43 left here. It, it's just very interesting that all of a sudden Murphy has become the target of Chelios, uh, not only late in game three, where he pleaded that uh, he thought the Penguins were going to score a goal at that moment, and then coming right back out to nail him from behind uh, to put him uh, on the ice. And now the Hawks beat it back into the Penguins in around the right side of Igor Kravchuk. Kravchuk shoots it and it missed the Penguin goal. Around to the left point, Steve Smith of Chicago. Try to get around Phil Bork, cut around him now, goes to the corner, centers it back, and it goes to Dirk Graham, who scored both Chicago goals. On to Brent Sutter. Sutter to the center point, to Kim Chucker slams one wide. And the Hawks now, watching Larry Murphy trying to poke it up ahead, he can't do it. Grabbed by Steve Smith, walking towards the net, he goes right in front of Murphy, reads the play and steals. Larry Murphy back to the Chicago Blue Line area. He'll come up and he'll shoot it right to the net, and Hasek will make his first save of the night. He replaced Eddie Bell for it after the Penguins scored their second goal. At 6.33, Steve Smith bouncing up into the Penguin right wing corner, and Steve Larmer of Chicago trying to hold it in. It bounces outside the zone. Jimmy Packett turned him around. Now, Steve Smith, the Chicago defenseman, 
Flip it up towards the Penguin net, and Barrasso is going to glove it, but it was an offside call against Chicago. And now in five seconds, all same assume will return to the ice, and the Penguins will have a power play, so that whistle on the offside play actually helped the Pins as Eddie Belfour stares on. You'll notice that Belfour is still wearing his mask. Normally, when a goaltender comes to the bench, he'll take that helmet off and relax, but uh, Belfour basically saying to Mike Keenan, I want to stay in this game, and I'm not taking my mask off, and that's the way it works. Uh, Belfour often will, will be very, very adamant about wanting to go back into the game and yell at Keenan and tell him he wants to be back in and they're not going to get anything by him. And he's a competitor, and Mike Keenan knows that. Belfour putting his gloves on now. Keenan just said something as he came down to that end of the bench. He may have been telling him to stay ready. Now Belfour Took takes the mask his mask off. off. He may have told him to put it away. <laughs> you never know. We're tied to two. Here in the first period, and Armour and Noonan out here. In a moment, Samuelson will come on. The Penguins peel back into their own in, and oh, let's see if he joins the play here. Trying to headman the puck to Yager to Lemieux. Lemieux after the Chicago win, trying to center it back to Yager. He is hit on the play. The pass broken up, but Yager takes over with the puck, going behind the net, around to Lemieux. Man open right pointers, Ronnie Francis goes to it. Off Samuelson left side. He's open, has the puck. Will he shoot it? Trying to swing it in deep to Kevin Stevens. He's taken out of the play neatly, and the Hawks. Trying to get it out, and they have it, and Brian Noonan shoots it away. And the Penguins are 20% on the power play against Chicago here in this series so far. Scotty Bowman said today that they worked on some things to try to get the power play going. He wasn't happy with the way it had been going. Three out of 15, and this is the 16th chance, and Lemieux into the Chicago end. Pulls back, good drop pass to Murphy, a slap shot, never got to the net. Now it's free, a front score, Lemieux! He gives the Penguins a lead. Off Hassick and Lemieux drills it home with the rebound. And the Penguins have a 3-2 lead. Oh, she wants to sell my monkey. Mario Lemieux after the shot by Larry Murphy. And the Pins score a power play goal. And Chelios has to take that long walk or skate from the penalty box to the bench. Well, Lemieux had the puck on the right wing boards. He threw it back to the point to Murphy, who drilled it to the net. It got through off Hasek. Hasek down on his back, and Lemieux patiently lifted that puck with a backhand up over Hasek and into the net to give the Penguins the lead again. Karen Stitt of Pittsburgh is $100 richer in our Iron Man Advantage contest. She gets $100 bucks from Iron City Beer and Mario Lemieux. So Lemieux, his 16th of the playoffs. Larry Murphy has an assist. And number 25, Kevin Stevens, also assisting on the goal. The Penguins lead 3-2 over Chicago. Larry Murphy now, the Penguins. Fired off the glove of Chelios onto the Chicago zone. Chelios will leave it for Brent Sutter. A lot of scoring here in the opening 20 minutes of play. Dirk Graham comes up. Samuelson got a piece of him and never let him into the zone. Dirk Graham has both scores for Chicago. Now to the left side of the Chicago end. The Pens are offside. 9-17 left here in the first. And already we have five goals scored in this game. It is 3-2 Pittsburgh on the Penguins Hockey Network. Wendy's Kick for a Million is back. Go to Wendy's, upsize your combo, and get a game card for a chance to win instant prizes. A 2009 Nissan Rogue. JVC Home Electronics. Esquire Watches. And Wendy's gift cards and food prizes. Plus, get bonus entries for a chance to be one of four to go head-to-head -to, -head to kick for one million dollars. Enjoy a Wendy's combo and get a Kick for a Million game card today. Three years ago, my mother was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, but it was a battle she couldn't win. We found it too late. If only we had known the signs sooner, like bloating, gas, and frequent urination. They're everyday symptoms, but if it's ovarian cancer and caught early, there is hope. The sad fact is that most are diagnosed late, and 70% do not survive. Join us across Canada for the Winner's Walk of Hope and help fund programs and research. Help save someone you love. It's Suzuki's 100th anniversary, and we're giving you lots of great reasons to celebrate, starting with the fuel-efficient SX4 sedan and hatchback. They're fun to drive with European-tuned suspension and loaded with standard features. Plus, built-in Suzuki Japanese quality. And right now, to celebrate, own an SX4 sedan or hatch for 111 11 bi-weekly with zero down and 0% financing for 72 months. Go to suzuki.ca and visit your local dealer for a test drive today. 
pick up the action with 7.16 to go in the first period and Pittsburgh leading Chicago 3-2 in Game 4 of the 1992 Stanley Cup Finals here on ESPN Classic. Gordy Roberts colliding with Noonan. He pushed a glove into Roberts' face, and he retaliated with a glove of his own and picked up a penalty for that. The Hawks have a chance to tie it on the power play. Stanton and Gilbert are in the penalty box also. That was after the fact. Yeah, the coincidental minors. <laughs> Hawks on their second power play opportunity. And here to the near side, Larmer goes off left point to Chelios of Chicago. Swing it down to the near corner, and Noonan trying to work his way free. Brian Noonan out to Chelios center point on the Noonan left wing circle. Will they shoot it? No. Goes cross rank. Man open. Stunt. By Kravchuk. That's off the side of the net. Now picked up behind the goal by Mario Lemieux. Beat it around the board. Chelios right side. Going to Kravchuk of Chicago. Down deep in the corner to Brian Noonan. Noonan looking. What's he going to do with it? He'll throw it behind the net. Roney trying to get himself free. And he does. Goes over to the far side. They get it to Chelios of Chicago. Center point. Kravchuk. Down deep to Noonan. Lost the puck. And the Penguins score it outside the line. Going back to take command will be Igor Kravchuk. He scoots into the Penguins in. Left side to Noonan. Over now to Steve Larmer. Larmer steps down around Lemieux. Makes a good move there. Played it up the body of Murphy. The carom right back to him. And he clears and takes the heat out of a hot kitchen. A minute nine to go in the penalty to the Penguins' Gordy Roberts. Chicago on the plate of center. And Kravchuk gets the puck over to Dirk Graham. And he'll slam it to the Penguins' ear. Barrasso, the Penguin goaltender. Sneak it here to the near side. The Hawks trying to give me team possession, and they will. Chelios pressured by Lemieux. Goes to Dirk Graham down low to Jeremy Roenick. Roenick back on the near side to Dirk Graham. Off to Chelios, and Chelios looks and shoots it. It was deflected, went up into the seats here just below the press box at Chicago Stadium. Good work by the Penguin defenseman, Shell Samuelson, and Jim Pack there to clean up the area in front of Tom Barrasso. Pack bumped Roenick. Shell Samuelson was handling Brian Marchman in front of the net. Barrasso getting a stick in there as well to try to help out. Samuelson tying up uh, Marchman best he could with that stick. Before that, Roenick was dumped from behind by Jimmy Pack. Delivered to the Penguins in, and Barrasso is going to clear it himself all the way back into Chicago territory. Asik will leave the puck for Igor Kravchuk. Penguins are shooting Chicago eight to six here in the first period. They lead three to two. And Kravchuk delivers the puck to the near side, and Marshman cut it deep in the play. He put a slip shot. Boy, he can fire it too, and it went wide right through the goal mouth. Around to the right wing board. Bob Airy out here killing the penalty for the Penguins, playing again tonight. The right side, a shot. Stopped it went off Marshman and the Penguins clear and that'll do it on the Hawks power play opportunity and they will be 0 for 2 here in this first period. Brian Noonan looking for Stefan Mateau. Mateau turned around by Gordy Roberts who just stepped on the ice. The Hawks peel back into their own in. Rod Buskus will get it over to Stefan Mateau and he tried to get Lemieux going up ice. That's Jocelyn but he can't do it and the Hawks retreat to their own in. Steve Smith leaving the puck over to Stefan Mateau and Mateau. Gave it away to Ulf Samuelson. Ulf Samuelson paired out here with Shell Samuelson right now. As Paul Stanton is out of the uh, Penguin lineup on the minor penalty. He'll have to wait for a whistle to come back on. Both he and Greg Gilbert will have to wait for that sound, and they will get it right now. So we have an icing call against Pittsburgh. 3-2, Pittsburgh on the Penguins Hockey Network. Victims, and there are victors. To the victor, go the spoils. All new, all that. Master Three. What does your signature say about you? This swooping arc indicates that you are an emotional rock, impervious to life's hardships, but it just breaks your heart that 80 million children, mostly girls, 
do not get to go to school. Show that you care about women's rights and global poverty. Sign up today at Oxfam.ca if you believe in health and education for all. Imagine. 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 Lotto 649's next jackpot is $3.5 million. Montana's double your dinner summer. Sure is, kid. Just order our famous pork ribs or new chicken or salmon entrees and get a free entree on your next visit. You can say that again. Okay, and get a free entree. Double your dinner summer. So good, it's worth repeating. Escape to Montana's. Now Deneen stepping in, going in around the goal. Deneen out front, shoots, head of step. Comes to the line. LaFontaine shot. He scores! LaFontaine at the blue line. Here in the fourth overtime. And down is Ted Curry. Klima catching up. He's in. She scores. Klima gets the goal for the Edmonton Oilers here in the third overtime. During an earlier commercial break, we saw Mario Lemieux having a discussion with Rick Kehoe along with after he had uh, scored the goal to give the Penguins the lead, talking about uh, something the Hawks were doing. Rick Kehoe has been a guy who's really concentrated on the power play for the Penguins for the last few years. Assistant coach. Face off left side of the Penguins in. Larmer drags it in deep to the corner. Centers it off to the right point. Now to Chelios. Back ends one towards the goal and it bounces in. And Barrasso got the glove on that. It's off Samuelson. Knocks down Brian Marchman. The Chicago left winger who's playing up on the wing here tonight. Well, Marchman is certainly used to the traffic in front of the net because normally he's a defenseman and has to clear guys out of there. So for him to stand in there and bang away is nothing new in front of the goal. Whether or not he can also do that and still find ways to score goals is another thing altogether. Joel Samuelson had him tied up in front of the net so the Barrasso could glove it and then Samuelson dumped him. Nothing called against Dolphy. Trattier. Equal strength now here of both clubs. And it goes to Larmer, and he belts one that'll be blocked. The Penguins come up with it. Ronnie Francis with Yager and Trotty at the moment. They dish it off to Yager, who will score here in this first period. Yarmir dancing with that puck around Larmer. Goes against Kravchuk. Got around him. Goes behind the net now. Trying to ward off the check. Speed it over. The pass to Ove Samuelson too far. And it goes right through traffic all the way to the Penguins here. Samuelson will lead it up to Trotty. Back to the Chicago zone. He comes in and puts a backhander on. That's stopped by Dominic Hasek. The Chicago goaltender with his glove down and he makes the save and play his whistle down. We'll get a face off in the Chicago zone. Chelios and Trottier now having a pretty good discussion. Well, when Samuelson got the puck in his own end, he looked up and Yager was starting to wheel again at center ice, looking down that right wing. You know and Samuelson yeah. went to Trottier. He kind of took Chelios with him, Yager did, and Samuelson was able to find Trottier right up the middle. This was before that when Yager went in on the rush on the right wing and went around the net. Took Kravchuk with him. Had a couple of Hawks chasing him as well as Larmer, but when he finally did dish it off, it was into no man's land. Trottier got that chance because of a good pass by Samuelson, and Yager's uh, getting attention from guys even when he doesn't have the puck. And I'll tell you who got some attention that time after it was all done was Chris Chelios because it was Brian Trottier, who can agitate as well as any of them, got over right in his face. And they started going, then Loney came over and said something to him, and Stevens came over and said something to Chris Chelios. So they're aware of what's going on and uh, Trotty is the type of guy that will rattle you pretty good with uh, the words and here in the near side of the Chicago end Chelios hung in there and he was barking back at Trotty and Roberts going to get it in the penguin zone swinging around to the far side Stevens looks for it Noonan put a good uh, check into him to force him off the puck and it goes back behind the net Murphy lost in a pretty good play by Justin Lemieux but he can't be Barrasso on an excellent play by Lemieux of the Hawks what a front shot score for Dirk Graham pass out of the corner and Dirk Graham right on the doorstep bangs it home as the hats come on the ice here and we've got a 3-3 game in the first period. Well the Hawks said today that they wanted to get more plays side to side making uh, traffic in front of Tom Barrasso and also getting in the move from one post to the other plays uh, going back and forth and where they've been able to do that. Graham has been able to hammer a couple of shots in from right on the doorstep with passes coming in through that goal mouth area. He's had easy pickings wide open off to the side of the net against Barrasso. Noonan with a good play. Was a new one after him, but not 
quickly enough, and Graham was wide open behind the defenseman, Larry Murphy. So Dirk Graham gets the hat trick here in the first period of the Chicago Blackhawks and tied the game at three. I tell you, when a guy gets hot, you got to get him the puck, and they're doing that for Graham, and it pokes it in to tie the game. 16-18, the time of the goal. Rasso played the pass and really was unable to break up the pass. He went over to play a shot on the play as it came right through the goal mouth. He just could not react quickly enough to the pass coming through and get a stick on that. And we had to be forced to make a save on Graham, which was impossible. And give Noonan credit for making a hard pass through that goal mouth, and Rasso just couldn't get a stick on it to break it up. Well, there's a hat here, and possibly one that was given out to people, or they bought, and they have just littered the entire ice surface here at Chicago with hats for the hat trick. We'll be back 3-3, the score on the Penguins Hockey Network. New Bud Light Lime. The easy drinking taste of Bud Light with a splash of 100% natural lime flavor. Bud Light Lime, now available in Canada. Ford has great news this summer. Now everybody gets employee pricing, so you pay what we pay. That could mean up to $15,000 in price adjustments. Plus, we're inviting you to take the Drive One Challenge, because we believe once you drive a Ford, you won't want to drive anything else. With employee pricing, there's no better time to buy a Ford. Get your employee price at your local Ford store. So come in today. This offer ends soon. Hi, this is Chuck Storm. I'm live at the scene where last night there was a robbery at about 3.30 in the morning. Now, police have... Oh, oh. Hey, it's Montana's Double Your Dinner Summer. Sure is, kid. Just order our famous pork ribs or new chicken or salmon entrees and get a free entree on your next visit. You can say that again. Okay, and get a free entree. Double Your Dinner Summer. So good, it's worth repeating. Escape to Montana's. New Bud Light Lime. The easy drinking taste of Bud Light with a splash of 100% natural lime flavor. Bud Light Lime, now available in Canada. Well, it's just like we started uh, at 7.42. That's the time they officially listed the game to start here, Chicago time. And we start the second period at 8.51, and it's a brand new game. It's 3-3. And Stanton of the Penguins from the face-off. Penguins moving right to left, shoots it off the boards and up into Chicago territory. Igor Kravchuk being pressured by Tockett. They'll collide, and the puck lifted around right point, and a shot by the Penguins deflected. Stevens in the corner. Chelios muscles him out of the way and delivers it over to Brent Sutter. Brent Sutter works with Brian Marchman, who plays the left wing in this line, and Dirk Graham. And Graham steps up into the Penguins zone, but he can't get to it. And Samuelson is drawing kind of an assignment on now. Dirk Graham here. Heavy hit by talking it on uh, Kravchuk again back in the Chicago zone and Chelios peels away two penguins are trapped look out here's Graham with three goals all three Chicago tallies here in this game losing the puck to Shell Samuelson all Samuelson and Lemieux bursting back into the Chicago end drop pass to Kevin Stevens in front got a man talking and he can't ram it home now Stevens in the corner sends it right in front here's talking right there he shoots and a score the penguins take the lead Rick talking I think got it off the glove of Dominic Hatsik and the Penguins have regained the lead. They lead four to three. Oh, go ahead. Make my day. Rick talking in front. Asik, I think, got a piece of it, Paul, but he was able to get a by him. And the Penguins regain the lead. 58 seconds into period number two. Well, Lemieux and Talkett and Stevens were on the ice for all of Graham's goals in the first period. And so were Robertson Murphy. So what the Penguins did was go back with Stanton and Ulf Samuelson on the ice with those three to start the game, the period, I should say. And then they took Paul Stanton off and put Shell Samuelson on. And this line made something happen with Tockett all alone in front. He was able to really uh, rag the puck for a moment in front of Hasek, pull him down. He did stop the first shot, but he got the second one and put it in to make it 4-3. So Rick Tockett, who already has uh, had the highest mark of uh, uh, playoff streak he assisted on a goal in the first period now has reached 10 games uh, in a row Noonan with a puck brings it back into the Penguins in and Brian Noonan will leave it in the corner for Jeremy Roenick Rick Tockett giving Pittsburgh the lead Lemieux will assist on it also we know that possibly Kevin Stevens now Francis delivered near side to Phil Bork and he is hit heavily on a check and the right to the right side of the uh, zone is shot to the net and Barrasso is able to glove that and hold on to it Tockett's goal for the Penguins, his six in the playoffs. 
And Lemieux and Stevens do assist on the goal. And the Penguins have the lead. Four to three. Now Rick talking. First made his presence really felt in that Penguin lineup in a game here in Chicago in March. Tonight his jaw was broken. Lemieux shot the puck and ran off his face. He came out and scored two goals in the third period with a broken jaw. Blackhawks were actually throwing elbows at him and everything, knowing that he had been hurt. Pocket scores so many of his goals, just like he did there. Right in front, and he just seems to get enough on the shot to beat the goaltender. You know, it rolls off of him, and he'll, he'll clean get a play right in front. He just overpowers you with that quick shot. And you saw there that he has the patience, too, Mike, to, to take his time, to wait for the goaltender to go down. He doesn't uh, get over-anxious when he gets the puck in front with a good scoring opportunity, and that's the sign of a true goal scorer, and he has become one. And, throughout the course of his career. Brian Noonan steps up into the Penguins in, but McKechnie strips him of the biscuit that goes on to center. Kravchuk giving the puck over to Brian Noonan, and he'll ram it to the Penguins in. Larry Murphy comes after the puck. Dirk Graham stepped in. He got it out to the left point to Kravchuk, and Kravchuk colliding with Ronnie Francis. Spins it back into the corner. Taken out of the play is Noonan by McKechnie. Good defensive work by McKechnie, but not out. Here's Kravchuk shooting right to the net. Stopped by Barrasso, and he covers to his knees to hold on. 4-3 Pittsburgh on the Penguins Hockey Network. In the war between fun and practicality, there are victims and there are victors. To the victor, go the sports. All new, all that, Master 3. Lotto 649's next jackpot is $3.5 million. Those early morning board meetings. We know why you do it, and so does Bauer. At Source for Sports, we play the game. We know our stuff. There are millions of mortgages in Canada. If you have one, you have a Manulife One number. Take Mike, for example. Mike and his wife Sarah have a mortgage, line of credit, car loan, and several savings and checking accounts. Simply by combining all their inefficient accounts into the revolutionary Manulife One, Mike calculated they could save $46,980 in interest and own their home years sooner. Discover your Manulife One number today at manulifeone.ca. A perennial all-star born in Chicago, Blackhawks defenseman Chris Chelios decided to cash in on his celebrity by opening Chelly's Chili Bar. Over the years, it's become a popular pre- and post-game eating establishment, as much for its chilling and cold old styles as for the fact it's a shrine to Blackhawks hockey. With more on Chelly's Chili, here's Bill Pito with a vintage NHL Tonight report from 1994. Across the NHL, Chris Chelios will never win votes for Mr. Congeniality. But in his hometown of Chicago, the jeers turn into cheers. And his biggest supporter is teammate Jeremy Roney. I don't know how it happened. I, I didn't like Chelly, you know, when he was with Montreal at all. Uh, maybe because I'm from Boston. Chelly simply says Bo Boston people don't like him. Yeah, it's every little kid's dream is to grow up and run me through the boards. Played with the Canadians in 1990, he reunited Chelly with his Windy City roots. And ever since, he's branched out in support of the community. His most recent venture, Chili's Chili Bar. It's the best chili in the world. It's the best chili in the world. You can make it hot, you can make it uh, mild. It's, it's, uh, it's perfect. If anybody has a chance to try it, they should try it. It's the best in the world. It's all yours, Daddy. It's all yours. It's great chili. The, the, the meat is what we probably stress the most because it's, it's real good quality meat, so. You don't have to worry about it in a half hour or nothing. That's good to me. <laughs> After starting his NHL career in Montreal, Chelios spent nearly the entire 1990s in his native Chicago before he was dealt to Detroit for Anders Ericsson and two first-round draft picks in 1999. Now let's watch Chelios and the Blackhawks battle the Penguins in Game 4 of the 1992 Stanley Cup Finals right here on ESPN Classic. 
What a save Barrasso made on Steve Larmer right in front. The puck came off the cage right between the legs of Murphy. Barrasso reacted quickly to that shot and got a stick glove on the shot by Larmer. Pittsburgh four, Chicago three, 6.05 left second period. And they drop it back to the left point. Here's Kravchuk right side to Rod Buskus of the Blackhawks. Shoots it in behind the Pittsburgh goal. Shale Samuelson went after it to fuck it over to the near corner. Loney of Pittsburgh trying to get a handle packed behind his own net. Does take the puck with Robbie Brown. Got a piece of him and turns him around with a solid hit. But the Penguins able to steer it back to center circle. Recapturing the puck will be Rod Buskus. Number 25 for the Hawks to Robbie Brown. So the two former Penguins are out here uh, on this uh, bison for the Hawks. Jimmy Pack, though, takes it off. To the right side of McEachern, bursting down that right wing, and he's got speed. He's trying to get around Kravchuk, put it in front. Loney's there, and he can't shoot it. He was too well covered. The Hawks go the other way. Boy, McEachern's been a force in the second period for the Penguins. He is playing well. Buskus on the right side, shoots it down the boards and around to the left wing corner of the Penguin zone. Still Grimson trying to get to it. Grimson has yet to register a playoff goal, and now he lost the puck, and Holmes Emerson comes up. Yager's back on. Chelio stepped into him, and on the center ice, the puck goes. The Hawks regain it. And shoot it in behind the penguin net. Barrasso got it by Hudson with a good maneuver there with his stick. And here around Chelios, the puck lifted back to center ice. You just have that feeling right now that sooner or later the penguins are going to get a chance on another breakaway or two on one. The way things are going. Here's Yager losing the puck. They want to give away to Goulet, and he'll shoot it wide of the penguin cage. Stanton being pressured by Mike Hudson. Goulet has the puck. Force over to the right point. The Hawks are really pressuring right now, trying to get a tying goal here. Chelios at center. His lead pass too far for Goulet. Goulet went to the corner. He's turned and knocked up his skates by Francis. And play his whistle down as Ronnie Francis went in to get it. But I think it's going to be called back here on an icing call against the Chicago Blackhawks. And that is the call. Keckern is just turning on the Jets tonight on that right wing. And again, protecting the puck on the off wing, dishing it in front of Loney. Was tied up by Robbie Brown playing defense. For the Hawks, remember all the criticism of him and the way he plays D. Well, that time he had Loney tied up, and Loney couldn't get the shot away. You remember the other night when McEachern dished one in like that in front, and Bork was not in the right spot to take the pass. And now guys are starting to realize that uh, they've got to get to the net when Sean McEachern steams down that right side because he's going to get the puck out in front. He does have a tendency to favor that right side and work off of that, just as Roenick has a tendency to favor the left side when he comes down. Jeremy Roenick. There's the organ with a million stops and the noise of 25 brass bands. And the pipes are built right into the rafters here, and there's a guy upstairs that has to open the louvers of this building or the place would rattle. It takes two people to run that organ. And they're not going to be able to move it to the new building down the street because it would cost them about a million dollars to do it. Ronnie Francis winning the faceoff left point. Gordy Roberts will take a slam shot that missed the target. And Jeremy Roenick of the Hawks looking for Brian Noonan. Noonan Gilbert on either side now for Jeremy Roenick. Gilbert comes on to Roenick. Shooting the front. Deflected in. The Hawks have tied it. Brian Noonan. It was off his body and it deflected by Barrasso. Tommy knew it immediately. He didn't even have to wait for the light to come on. I think it hit Noonan in the chest. Or Noonan in the chest and went in. The game is tied. Unless it hit a Penguin defense, but that might be a possibility. But the Hawks tie it. Noonan dumped it to the corner. Roberts had a tough time turning to get back and get it. Bill Bork was there before Roberts was, and then he was out of position when Ronick got to it. And Noonan had position on Larry Murphy as well and was able to deflect that in. Gordy Roberts just got caught betwixt and between on that play. And you're talking all night early about the fact that the Penguin defense has been able to get back and get on the puck, but that time Roberts was not able to get there. Bork was there, and then Roberts could not help him out because he was uh, cheating in also to try to get to the puck. There are the Hawks now, and Marchman shooting the Vesca stop. Rebound, he puts it on, and Barrasso stops that one too. It's all Chicago right now. They've come on strong here in the second period. Steve Smith will whack it around to the near boards. And Stevens of Pittsburgh is after it. Shot up up the arm of Rick Tockett. Steve Smith has the puck as he falls down and gets it and guns it right back into the Penguin zone. A bouncing biscuit controlled by Barrasso. Off Samuelson. Lead it up to Kevin Stevens. Looks for a breaking Lemieux behind Chelios. Lemieux to the left side. Comes against Hasek. Shoots it and he stopped him with a stick. Lemieux is decked by Steve Smith and play will continue. Steve Smith taking Lemieux down. I don't know what game Andy's watching. Here comes Larmer. Drooling one right to the goal on that stop. And now Tuckett is upended by Jocelyn Lemieux. 
335 left here in the second period. Pittsburgh 4, Chicago 4 on the Penguins Hockey Network. Imagine. 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 Lotto 649's next jackpot is $3.5 million. Friday on Real Classics. I just haven't gotten the break I need. You have opportunity here. You might call it the opportunity of a lifetime. Own ownership. Part of the media rights, the gambling revenues, the works. How many times are you going to have to get your head handed to you? Sooner or later, they're going to kill somebody. The man wants a show, man. I guess we'll have to give him one. Chris Klein, LL Cool J, and Rebecca Romaine star in the real classic Rollerball. Only on ESPN Classic. They lay claim to the curve, the rise, the twist, demanding nothing less than more, refusing to compromise joy in the name of practicality. We build cars for people like that. We are people like that. Cyber Clean, the miracle cleaning compound for car interiors. Deep clean those hard to reach spots with ease, leaving no streaks or residue. Just press it on and the dirt is gone. The science of clean is Cyber Clean. Vermeer was cheating at center ice for the longest time. He looked for a lead pass and didn't get it. Then Stevens finally did get it to him. He almost sneaked that one in on the short side. And after he shot it, Smith hit him from behind as he was going back behind the net and knocked him into the boards. Tockett was upended at the other end of the rink. Right. Now they've given that goal to Jeremy Roenick, but it uh, seemed to me that Brian Newton was the man that whacked it in right in front of the goal. Lemieux drifting to his left. He tried to sneak that one in and went off the stick of Hasek, and then Smith finished him off. You know what he tried to do? He tried to decoy Hasek to make him think he was going to the slot area. He gave that little look off and then tried to beat him, but uh, Hasek would have no part of it. We're tied at four here in the second period. 323 left. And Igor Kravchuk puts it up in the atmosphere to the Penguins in. Brian Noonan comes up with the puck. Going to Buskis and it went right by a stick. Rada come over to the right point to take it, slipping it behind the net. Roney who might get a little burst of confidence now after helping set up that goal. It's his first point of the playoff against the Penguins in this series. Roney into his own end, runs into his own man, but Buskis back to take control of it. Buskis in front of his own goal. Skating hard on the left side, comes out. And swings it down the boards into the Penguins zone. This will be an icing call against Chicago with 2.53 left. The shots are dead even at 20 apiece. And the game is dead even at four apiece here in the second period. You know, Mike Keenan said today that Brian Noonan is pretty nifty around the net and he wanted to get him in position and hope that they could get plays across Barrasso. And once again, Ronick able to put it across the goal mouth for Noonan. And Ronick gets the goal, but it sure appeared as though Noonan got a stick on it last. You know, Ronick's line will come back on here now with uh, Stefan Mateau and Steve Larmer. Tommy Brown and Dirk Graham come off the ice. And Trottier, Bork, and Yager will be uh, a trio for Coach Scotty Bowman. Ryan Noonan scored 38 goals last year at Indianapolis and that puck appeared to go off the skate of Larry Murphy and into the net. I think it hit him in the, the, the butt. Yep. <laughs> and deflected in. Barrasso knew it right away. I mean the way he sighted, it even have to wait for the light to go on. It was one of those oh, I can't believe it but that's what happened and Chelio shoots it after the whistle sounded here and an offside call against Chicago. Chelios and Bork have a couple of words now. Lemieux's unit steps back on, so Trottier comes off, and the Penguins put Lemieux, Stevens, and Tockett on. Ariel's got a goal and an assist here tonight, or two assists for the Penguins. He's got a 3.9 against the Blackhawks, 34 in the series, playoff series uh, overall. And leads everybody in that department. Chelios right from the draw, slam it to the Penguin net, stop, rebound goes to Graham, he shoots it! 
And that's stopped by Barrasso. Dirk Graham has three of the four Chicago goals. Ronick has the other. As he drilled it off the back side of Larry Murphy, it appeared. Barrasso stopping that. The momentum here in the second half of this period has definitely belonged to Chicago. Marchman really decked Dolph Samuelson. And that was uh, after he decked him. Samuelson going down. The shot coming up where Barrasso could see it. And he had to pounce down on top of it before Marchman could get to it. And Marchman can hit, too. And then you have him up front. He's cause some problems for those Penguin defense and forwards. Pretty good hockey player. Larmer to the right point. Chelios again. He's the trigger man. He walks right in. Look out. His wrist shot partially deflected. It went behind the end of Marchman. Marchman centers it, and it comes right to Tockett. Out to Lemieux with Francis now as they race to the Chicago line. Lemieux trying to split the defense. He couldn't keep the puck, though. It's off Hasek now to the right point. Murphy in front to Lemieux. Lemieux has that puck, but it was an offside call against the Penguins. Murphy touched that one way outside. And Lemieux got the puck around that net and pulled the trigger. Must have been a late whistle. Tockett talking to Van Helleman. Somebody must have been late in blowing the whistle on the offside play. No, I just don't think he heard it because when Lemieux was so far down the, by the net where the whistle blew up by the blue line, he just didn't hear it in this noisy Chicago stadium. Murphy shot that puck from about six feet outside the blue line. Well, Mario Lemieux has figured in on three of the four Penguin goals. Yarmer Yager had the opening tally of this hockey game. A minute 37 seconds into the first period. And now we're tied at four. And Rod Buskis brings it through to center. On to the uh, Pittsburgh in and off Samuelson bouncing away up the sideboards back into Chicago territory. And the Hawks have command of it and they bring it on to center circle. Buskis will shoot it in off the glove of Larry Murphy. And Murphy returned, shouldered by Brian Noonan. Stevens finding Tockett. Lemieux out wanting the puck, and he gives it to him at the Chicago line. McCratchick lost it now in front. Here's Lemieux. In and goes back. In and stopped by Hasek. Great save again by Dominic Hasek on Mario Lemieux. And he gave more moves than May West on that one, but Hasek again continues to sparkle to stop Mario Lemieux. Now the Hawks come back on the rush, and here's Jocelyn Lemieux to the Penguins in. Right side of Graham. His shot blocked by Ulf Samuelson. It comes around to Brian Noonan, left wing boards. Lemieux has had a couple of key chances against Dominic Hasek, but he has been spectacular in stopping Lemieux, particularly on the stick-hand side. Mario's going to have to give him a little different look. Here's Lemieux again. He got around Chelios. Knocked down, though. Feet it ahead of Stevens in a great play around Hasek, and Hasek challenges him to come out and knock it away. Dominic Hasek, another big goaltending effort to stop Kevin Stevens as Lemieux went diving to make the play to Stevens, and Dominic Hasek gambled and gambled right, and he does not allow Stevens a breakaway chance. Here with the Hawks, right side. Ronick now with the Penguins in. Roney goes over and a pass off Larmer's uh, skates. Lemieux gets it. Now he lost it. Chilio shoots it blocked by Stevens. And that hurt the Penguin left winger. The Hawks step right back to the Penguin line. Are they onside? Yes, they are as they go into the Penguin zone, but they give it away to Kevin Stevens, and he'll fire that one all the way back to the Chicago zone. Chilios lifted right wing to Steve Larmer of Chicago. His pass off the skate of Ronnie Francis. Steve Smith of the Blackhawks. Roney on the far side to Chelios. Lemieux has put on the Ritz here in this hockey game, but Dominic Hasek has answered him in the second period. And we're down to 16 seconds left as the Hawks carry to the Penguin near corner. Larmer's pass right by everybody, and it comes all the way back to Chicago territory, and it looks as though we'll go to the third period tied again in an uneven hockey game. Brent Sutter to Steve Larmer. Larmer's slap shot blocked by Alf Samuelson, and time runs out. That's the end of two. We've seen a lot of great action in this game so far. And guess what? We still have a whole lot more to go. Tied at four through two in game four on the Penguins Hockey Network. Introducing Dairy Queen Sweet Deals. Any two items for $4, any three items for $5, or any four items for $6. Great food, great deals. I can get a chicken wrap and a sundae together. It's the meal I want at the price I want. The choice is mine. I'm master of my own domain. All powerful. <laughs> Whoa, was that lightning? DQ Sweet Deals. What's your deal?
The new JDC Averio hard drive camcorder. Share your videos with one touch upload to YouTube and easy export to your iTunes library. The all new JDC Averio hard drive camcorder. The perfect experience. JVC. In the war between fun and practicality, there are victims and there are victors. To the victor. It's early in the third period with Chicago and Pittsburgh all tied at four in game four of the 1992 Stanley Cup Finals here on ESPN Classic. Rick Toggin made a great pass off the boards to Lemieux, which you don't see there, but Lemieux went in. He didn't even deep. He really just held the puck on the stick, never double clutched, didn't really do anything to fake Osek. He went down and got up with a glove and made the save. When you normally will deep try something, he tried to pick the far side on him, and Hasek plucked it out of the air. Oh, Samuelson blast in one around the near side. I'll tell you what happens in games like this. Sometimes it's spectacular saves. You keep making them and making them, and then you get kind of a freak goal. And here is Sir Lemieux again with the puck. Lemieux put it in front, took it. It went right by him as Buskus bounced him around. And here come the Blackhawks on the counterattack. Igor Kravchuk can't uh, handle the puck. And again to center ice. Lemieux wants the biscuit. Go into the Chicago end. Marchman trying to ride him off the puck, and he does. Brian Marchman bouncing up by Ulf Samuelson into Penguin territory. And Ulf Samuelson looking for Lemieux. Getting ahead of the Chicago end. Kravchuk had knocked down Tuckett. And the puck free back into the Chicago zone. But Jeremy Roenick comes out of a traffic jam. Got around Lemieux. Roenick is flying. Great hockey here. Roenick on the right side. Drop pass for Goulet. He can't shoot it now. Turns around. Looking to make a play. And he lost the puck to Lemieux. And here is Tuckett up ahead. Lemieux brings it up 2 on 2 to the Chicago end. Drop pass to Tuckett. Has Murphy open. He's there. His shot went right over the crossbar. Larry Murphy won a game for the Penguins earlier this year in a similar type of shot. Here's Murphy again, right wing circle, fires it, and he scores! The Penguins take the lead, five to four. Larry Murphy, I believe, will get the goal, and the Penguins have the lead again, five four. Oh, call Arnold Slick from Turtle Creek. Oh boy, the Pens just kept pushing and pushing and pushing, and Larry Murphy shot it. I believe he'll get the goal. And the Penguins are up by one. He had an identical opportunity earlier. Mario banged Chris Chelios to the boards, got the puck to talk, and he made a great play off the boards to wheel it out to Murphy. And that puck sailed into the net and appeared to hit the stick of Sean McEachern. It might have hit McEachern on the way in. What I tell you? All the great saves, and I may have been deflected in. And it fluttered in underneath the crossbar. Larry Murphy gets the goal. McEachern came back. Did you see it better, Paul? I can't tell if McKecker got a piece of it or not, but it sure seemed to uh, hit something because it fluttered into the net. Yeah, it did. It did catch a piece of something and went in the net. So the Penguins lead 5-4 here in the third, and Ronnie Francis flips it back to the Chicago line. Well, was that a great play by Tockett? Lemieux taking Chelios hard to the boards, making the hit to pop that puck loose. Jocelyn Lemieux now forced it up into the Penguins in, and it comes back in behind the Pittsburgh goal. Larry Murphy gets his sixth goal of the playoffs. Jocelyn Lemieux trying to center. The Hawks have been able to come back at times. Here the right side a shot towards the net, blocked in front. And Phil Bork of the Penguins takes it and shoots it up ice. The goal at 4.51, Tockett has the only assist on it. Larry Murphy is sixth of the playoffs. And Shell Samuelson returning to his own end, gets it to Jimmy Pack, on to Troy Loney, and bouncing up to Yager. Here he comes to the Chicago end, trying to beat Steve Smith. Yager turn around, they battle for it. Loney gets the puck and shoots it in behind the goal. Nobody is there. Chelios defensively for Chicago. Giving the puck to Greg Gilbert. Gilbert trying to find a breaking Roenick, but the Penguins force it right back into Chicago territory. Now the Penguins trying to protect the lead once again. They're up by one, 5-4. Jimmy Pack drilling up to the Chicago line, and Chelios comes up with the biscuit. He's on the move, and he'll backhand it away on the carom in behind the Pittsburgh net. Barrasso does not go after it. Robbie Brown does in front. Got a man there, and a quick shot by Roenick. Hit the side of the goal. One of the few times Tommy would not go out and play the puck. And it almost cost him there. Here's Roney passing beautifully to Chelio. Slap shot. Missed the net. Rebound. He came up Barrasso and went wide. 
Now Jimmy Pack of the Penguins sneaking around the boards. Right side, Chelios guns it towards the goal, blocked by Pack. Here come the Penguins on the other, on the going the other way is uh, Jogger on the right wing, going after the Chicago near corner, and Chelios Pack can't find the puck. Neither can Jogger. That was Robbie Brown who almost scored. He actually got the old cue stick out and poked that puck and almost put it in the net. Bill Grapes and pretty pass to Hudson. Penguins in and shot off the stick of Barrasso from 35. Stevens looking to lead it ahead of Lemieux. Intercepted by Kravchuk of Chicago, and it's an old-fashioned shootout here tonight at Chicago Stadium. In game four, the Hawks pulling out everything they have and are coming at the Penguins in an offensive way here in this game, and the Penguins lead 5-4. Talking left wing of Lemieux, back two on one with Stevens. Lemieux left side against Buskis, goes to Stevens, and he fanned on the shot from the slot. Now Lemieux behind the net. Mario sets it up, put it right in front of Kravchuk, and it goes right to the goal. And that's it. Will grab the puck. Did he hold it long enough? No, it's still loose. We'll keep on going. Now here on the right side, Buskis. And he dumps it ahead, bouncing puck towards the Penguin net. And Shell Samuelson gains possession of it. The Penguin defenseman. This pass all the way to Chicago territory, wide of Hasek. And Chelios will be back to uh, gain the puck. He must have touched that puck. And Smith now. Skating to center ice for the Blackhawks. Rip it to the right wing corner. Penguin zone. 12-13 left in the third. The Penguins five and the Hawks four. Jimmy Pack of Pittsburgh. The go-ahead goal here in this hockey game in the third period by Larry Murphy. Here's Francis back now with McEachern two on one. Francis comes in, shoots and scores! Ronnie Francis beats goaltender Hasek like a rented mule. He looked off and beat him on the short side, I believe. And the Penguins now lead six to four. Ronnie Francis looked off on a Kickrin and he drills it home from 30 feet and now Pittsburgh has a 6-4 lead here in the third. I don't know, you think the Penguins are getting enough odd man breaks in this hockey game? The Hawks are pressing. They wanted, they wanted to take the lead so badly and he beat him right on the short side. Francis is so good at coming straight at the goaltender and just rifling the puck past him. He does that all the time. He doesn't really seek or anything. He doesn't make, just makes it look simple. He just drills you, overpowers you. McEachern was coming in on that side. He never even looked at him. Forget it. So the Penguins now have a 6-4 lead here in the third period. Jimmy Pack will get one of the assists. And from center ice, Ron Francis. I think McEachern gets one also. All right, we'll wait and get the official announcement on it, but the Penguins now lead by a pair, and so the Hawks have to keep pressuring here and putting the attack on the Penguins because they are down by two here in the third period. If the Penguins win, the Stanley Cup stays with the Penguins. If not, a game five will be forced uh, in Pittsburgh on Wednesday night. Now Grimson carries the puck back to the Penguin line, and the Hawks are offside. It is McEachern and Pack on the assist at 7.59. We'll return. The Penguins by a pair on the Penguins Hockey Network. CyberClean, the revolutionary cleaning compound for high-tech equipment. Deep clean all your electronics with ease. CyberClean removes dust and debris on contact. Just press it on and the dirt is gone. The science of clean is CyberClean. Imagine. 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 Lotto 649's next jackpot is $3.5 million. This summer, Ford wants you to experience the best vehicles we've ever built. So we're inviting you to take the Drive One Challenge. We believe that once you drive a Ford, you won't want to drive anything else. And with employee pricing, you'll pay what we pay. But if we still haven't won you over and you buy a competitive vehicle, we'll give you $100. To take the Drive One Challenge, plus get your employee price, visit your local Ford store. This offer ends soon, so come in today. It's Montana's Double Your Dinner Summer. Sure is, kid. Just order our famous pork ribs or new chicken or salmon entrees and get a free entree on your next visit. You can say that again. Okay, and get a free entree. Double Your Dinner Summer. So good, it's worth repeating. Escape to Montana's. Well, if Larry Murphy ends up with that goal, and it'll be his first goal in 10 games in the playoffs. He saved it for the right time, didn't he? And after all the abuse he has taken in this hockey game, well, the Hawks' Jeremy Roenick steps in here, and he'll have uh, an assignment against Brian Trottier. 
Remember this again. The Hawks have not scored a third period goal in this series today. And we played almost halfway through this third period. They've not been able to get on the scoreboard. The Penguins have just shut them down in the third period of all the games, at least to this point. Jeremy Roenick of Chicago. And that is a mark of a champion, believe me. Marchman has the puck, and he shoots it towards the net. Mike Keenan talks so much about his Hawks being the best-conditioned team in the National Hockey League and how strong they were. And here's Trotty, left side, going to the Chicago end, comes down, looking for a man in front. It's off now, Murphy, stick, and the Penguins are pressing for the kill right now, but the Hawks have command of it. They get it on the center to Jeremy Roney. That was a three-on-one. And I'm telling you right now, I can just feel the Hawks right now. The life has gone out of them a little bit. Murphy shoots it back into the left-wing corner of the Chicago zone. They're trying to regroup and get it going, but they are... Having a tough time. Robbie Brown up to the Penguin line, and he shoots it away to the Penguin goal, and Barrasso gloves it. Wind it over to the corner. Lemieux has the puck, and he swings it off the sideboards and back down to center red. Steve Smith had it, but he lost it. And here's Stevens to the right wing of Lemieux with a little open space comes down. He pushes it wide. The Hawks are giving Pittsburgh a lot of room in this third period, and they're taking advantage of it with the goal scorers they have and the people to make plays. And the Hawks lose it again. Here's Lemieux to the Chicago in a slap shot blocked by Chelios. And it's off Chelios's body into the seats. Fans are just getting too many chances right now for the Hawks to get back, believe me. They are just dominating here from an offensive standpoint. 6-4 Pittsburgh on the Penguins Hockey Network. In the war between fun and practicality, there are victims and there are victors. To the victor, go to sports. Master three. Friday on Real Classics. I just haven't gotten the break I need. You have an opportunity here. You might call it the opportunity of a lifetime. I want ownership. Part of the media rights, the gambling revenues, the works. How many times are you going to have to get your head handed to you? Sooner or later, they're going to kill somebody. The man wants a show, is. I guess we'll have to give him one. Chris Klein, LL Cool J, and Rebecca Romaine star in the real classic Rollerball, only on ESPN Classic. New Bud Light Lime. The easy drinking taste of Bud Light with a splash of 100% natural lime flavor. Bud Light Lime, now available in Canada. Hey, it's Montana's Double Your Dinner Summer. Sure is, kid. Just order our famous pork ribs or new chicken or salmon entrees and get a free entree on your next visit. You can say that again. Okay, and get a free entree. Double Your Dinner Summer. So good, it's worth repeating. Escape to Montana's. For more information on our classic games, trivia, upcoming specials, and the ESPN Classic program schedule, go to ESPN.com. Keyword, classic. While well, the Penguins and the Blackhawks vied for hockey's biggest prize in the spring of 1992, American Cowboys dominated the 1992 Academy Awards. The best picture was Unforgiven, a modern-day Western starring Clint Eastwood, Morgan Freeman, and Gene Hackman, who also scored an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. Al Pacino took home the Best Actor honors for his performance in Scent of a Woman. Best Actress went to Emma Thompson for her role in Howard's End, while Best Supporting Actress was awarded to Marissa Tomei for her work in the comedy My Cousin Vinny. Now let's return to the Windy City for more action from Game 4 of the 1992 Stanley Cup Finals between the Chicago Blackhawks and the Pittsburgh Penguins on ESPN Classic. Well, he purchased a, a hockey club with Mr. Uh, Bellsberg and uh, also Tom Ruda in November from Ed DeBartolo. Who I would imagine is in Youngstown watching this game. I know he is. And you know uh, Mr. D, uh, it's an exciting time once again. And here we go. We'll see if the Penguins can hold on here and win their second straight Stanley Cup championship. And Steve Smith winding up ahead. It comes off Jimmy Pack. Pack the Penguin defenseman. Flip it up and pocket runs into Marchman. And Shale Samuelson now poking to center red. Intercepting it goes back into the Penguin zone. And Stevens hustles over to get it and just clears it away. Now the Penguins will try and protect this lead here up by a pair with less than 10 minutes to go in regulation time. Steve Smith the Rod Buskus. Buskus finding an open man. Mario Lemieux has three points tonight to help the Penguin uh, attack. Here the Hawks setting up from their own line. But in the third period, it's Murphy and Francis who have scored goals. Now Jocelyn Lemieux wrists one right to the net. Barrasso stops that from 45. Lemieux picks up the mail. Here he comes to center ice with Tockett and Stevens. It was laid into the Chicago way, and the Penguins are going to that defensive play right now. 
And they are nine minutes and 21 seconds away from winning the Stanley Cup once again. Igor Kravchuk with the Hawks going to try and get back into it here. They're outside the Penguin line. They can't get in right now. Noonan shoots it into the far corner, and Alf Samuelson goes after it. His pass off Bork, and it goes right through to center red. And Chris Chelios will find Dirk Graham, who's been a big star tonight for the Hawks with three goals. Noonan has a good out. Here's Chelios coming in against Phil Bork, but he can't pull the trigger. Drops it instead to Kravchuk. Kravchuk, slip shot. Francis got over and deflected it. What is going to make it? Never mind. 6-4 Pittsburgh on the Penguins Hockey Network. New Bud Light Lime with a splash of 100% natural lime flavor. Hey, it's Montana's Double Your Dinner Summer. Sure is, kid. Just order our famous pork ribs or new chicken or salmon entrees and get a free entree on your next visit. You can say that again. Okay, and get a free entree. Double Your Dinner Summer. So good, it's worth repeating. Escape to Montana's. Ford has great news this summer. Now everybody gets employee pricing, so you pay what we pay. That could mean up to $15,000 in price adjustments. Plus, we're inviting you to take the Drive One Challenge, because we believe once you drive a Ford, you won't want to drive anything else. With employee pricing, there's no better time to buy a Ford. Get your employee price at your local Ford store. So come in today. This offer ends soon. CyberClean, the miracle cleaning compound for car interiors. Deep clean those hard to reach spots with ease, leaving no streaks or residue. Just press it on and the dirt is gone. The science of clean is CyberClean. New Bud Light Lime. The easy drinking taste of Bud Light with a splash of 100% natural lime flavor. Bud Light Lime, now available in Canada. Ken Dryden, who was a great goaltender of the Montreal Canadiens, said the reason Scotty Bowman was a great coach is because he just let the players decide the game. He let them go out and just play the game. But the fact of the matter is, he does a lot of juggling of his players and lines, and he does have an effect on the outcome of games. Well, Paul, I'll tell you, you learn from experience, and certainly he has enough of that. And here's Gribson now, near side. Shooter back to that stop, rebound, and front score! The Hawks get a goal to make it 6 5. Jeremy Roenick. Jeremy Roney comes up with his second goal of the game, and boy, he scores a goal when they need him the most to get him back within one. You gotta give the Hawks credit there. They've come right back now to <clears throat> get back within a goal. Two Penguins in the corner, a weird hop off the, where did it hit? Grasso's stick, it came out, Pack was unable to play it. Rona got there first and hammered it back into the net. Grasso was already down, so he couldn't get over to stop Roenick. Well, what seemed like such a helpless moment for the Blackhawks here the last five to seven minutes all of a sudden turns in their uh, momentum now as they have cut it to a 6-5 Penguin lead. And here's Steve Smith back to get possession of the puck. And Smith to the Blackhawks going to Rod Buskus. Jarmer Yager putting pressure on him. That's the first goal the Hawks have scored in the third period of a game in this series. And it comes off uh, Jeremy Roenick's stick. Armour of Chicago to the right wing to Robbie Brown. You almost got that feeling the team that has it last may win this one. Here's Gribson back into Penguin territory and offside against Chicago. Ronick again scoring an 11-18 to make it a 6-5 hockey game. Gribson and former Penguin Rod Buskus gets an assist. His first ever in a Stanley Cup final. Roney gets the goal. And we still have 8-13 left here in regulation. And remember, the Hawks have battled back all night long to tie the game. And they still got one to go. Puck yeah. came off the glove of Barrasso right to Roenick. He took one shot. It was stopped. He got the rebound and put it in. What a play out of the corner by Grimson. Grimson just got it to the net. Barrasso had trouble handling it. Handcuffed him and came right to Roenick. Well, the Penguins have outshot Chicago 28-27. They lead them by one. They lead by one on the scoreboard, too. 6-5. And here's Yager back into the Chicago zone. Roenick took it away. Roenick around to Grimson. Looks back for Roenick. Grimson's going to carry the puck, though. Still Grimson to the Penguins stripe, and he'll start in. Throw it in behind the net. Roenick is after it. Roenick Right to center, comes off right point to Chelios of Chicago. Shoots it, and it was a flick, and that one almost went in. 
Yagra, the Penguins, gains possession of the puck. And here he comes storming back to the Chicago line. Down the right wing. Moves inside now. Trying to feed it to Loney. Cut him with a goal. But Chelios broke up that maneuver. And Chelios will find Steve Larmer. Now the goal by Roenick has given the Hawks new life here. They appear to be kind of down and out. But they've gotten a goal to get back within one. They trail the series three games to none. And they're trying to get a victory here to get back and get started in the series anyway. Chelios comes in. He lost it to Mario Lemieux. Has two men open right wing. Goes to Stevens. Off wing. Right side. Drop pass. Talking out of Lemieux in front. But the pass was too hard. He couldn't handle it. Steve Smith will knock him down. And he whacks Smith back with a stick as they jam one another. Now Smith has been whacking Lemieux from behind all night. And Mario turned around and put the stick into him. And here are the Hawks clearing the puck out of their own area. Right to the Penguin goal. Jimmy Pack goes back. He'll get the puck. It's passed hard for Talkett, and this will be right to the net. Dominic Hasek was 648 left in regulation. 6-5, the Penguins lead here in game number four. And the Hawks spin it back to Penguin territory. Off the carom. Barrasso's going to move it away from an oncoming Brett Sutter. Jocelyn Lemieux trying to get there. He could. Mateau has it. He shoots it. Murphy blocked that. And he'll start rushing up for the Penguins. Putting the puck into the right wing corner of the Chicago zone. Igor Krabchuk, the Chicago defenseman. Finding Stefan Mateau. Mateau put it the circle to the right of Barrasso, but the Penguins again gather it in. And they corral the puck, and Francis will throw it in behind the Chicago goal. Hassig stepping behind his net. Left the puck for Chelios, but he gave it away to Phil Bork. Bork in front and went right by McEachern, who was planted in front of that goal, trying to get a deflection. The Hawks skate with the puck back to center, and Jocelyn Lemieux will rifle it behind the Pittsburgh net, and Ulf Samuelson defensively for the Penguins. Finding a breaking Sean McEachern on right wing, and he is hit heavily on a good check by Grimson. Knocked off his skates, but he got it up into Chicago ice. Less than six minutes left in regulation. Roenick darts around one man. A second he darts around. Coming down, put it in the slot. And Larmer can't tee it up, and Loney knocks it out of midair. Back down to Chicago territory. This will be far enough for icing. And touched by Chelios. 5.37 left in regulation. Pittsburgh 6 and Chicago 5 on the Penguins Hockey Network. This summer, Ford wants you to experience the best vehicles we've ever built. So we're inviting you to take the Drive One Challenge. We believe that once you drive a Ford, you won't want to drive anything else. And with employee pricing, you'll pay what we pay. But if we still haven't won you over and you buy a competitive vehicle, we'll give you $100. To take the Drive One Challenge, plus get your employee price, visit your local Ford store. This offer ends soon, so come in today. The new JDC, a burial memory card camcorder with dual SD card slots. One touch upload to YouTube and easy export to your iTunes library. The new colorful of burial memory card camcorders. The perfect experience. JVC. Capturing the beauty of nature. That's my vision. Every day, Transitions lenses are there to help care for my sight. Transitions lenses adjust to changing light to reduce glare and help protect your eyes from UV damage so you can see better today and tomorrow. Live your vision. Transitions. Healthy sight in every light. Play in the Live Your Vision contest online for your chance to win $5,000. Plus, Transitions will donate $5,000 to the charity of your choice. Enter at Transitions.com. From your coach's strategy to your line mates to your biggest fans, we know it's a team game and so does Athletic Knit. For all your team needs, trust Source for Sports. At Source for Sports, we play the game. We know our stuff. You're watching ESPN Classic. You're watching Game 4 of the 1992 Stanley Cup Finals between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Chicago Blackhawks right here on ESPN Classic. Well, I don't know what the outcome of this game is going to be, but should the Penguins win it, they're going to go down as one of the, uh, the better teams, I think, in the uh, playoffs in National Hockey League history, just from the fact that they would have won 11 straight to close it out. To win 11 straight playoff games, as the Hawks did, is an absolutely amazing statistic. It really is. And to do it under the pressure of this situation in the Stanley Cup Finals, should they win this game, it would be remarkable. And blasted up into the right-wing corner of the Penguins zone against... Uh, the Pens, the Hawks kick it free as it comes around to the near wing. Digging for it will be Dirk Graham. Graham is flattened by Yager, and the Penguins do dump it back to center. Igor Kravchuk over to Chris Chelios. So in this game, Mike Keenan has broken up his defensive pairing of Chelios and Smith. Gone for more offense. They certainly have gotten that. They have five goals on the board, but they trail 6-5. Marchment right wing going over to Brian Noonan. And Noonan leaves it over to Graham. Shoots it right to the net. He has three on the night, but he's stopped by Barrasso. 
Tommy standing tall right there, and he looks so cool at the moment. Here's Trottier forcing the puck back behind Dominic Hasek. And Hasek gets the puck to Smith, who is rattled by Yarmer Yager. Brent Sutter's over to try and get the puck. 4.45 left in regulation, and the Penguins lead 6-5. Trying to win the Stanley Cup here tonight in Chicago. And Chelio spins it in. Right into Penguin territory. Pack played it to the point, but not out. Steve Smith put it over the glass and out of action. Huh. We'll be back. Pittsburgh 6, Chicago 5 on the Penguins Hockey Network. Hi, this is Chuck Storm. I'm live at the scene where last night there was a robbery at about 3.30 in the morning. Now, police have... Oh. Oh. In the war between fun and practicality, there are victims, and there are victors. To the victor, go to sports. All new, all that, Master 3. Cyber Clean, the miracle cleaning compound for car interiors. Deep clean those hard to reach spots with ease, leaving no streaks or residue. Just press it on and the dirt is gone. The science of clean is Cyber Clean. Imagine. 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 Lotto 649's next jackpot is $3.5 million. It's Montana's Double Your Dinner Summer. Sure is, kid. Just order our famous pork ribs or new chicken or salmon entrees and get a free entree on your next visit. You can say that again. Okay, and get a free entree. Double Your Dinner Summer. So good, it's worth repeating. Escape to Montana's. They might be stopping it. That might be all, ladies and gentlemen. I'm set and I'm just like 22 years old. I must be the greatest. I still got the world. I still got the world. I still got the world. You're watching ESPN Classic. I want to remind you folks that uh, win or lose this game tonight, the Penguins will not be uh, landing to the main terminal of the uh, Greater Pittsburgh Airport, and they have requested that the folks do not come out to the airport to greet the fans. They will have a celebration so the win Penguins win the Stanley Cup. It will be announced later, but uh, they would appreciate it uh, if you do not uh, arrive because there just be, will be nobody there. And it goes back in behind the Pittsburgh net and Shale Samuelson digging for that buck. Chopped around to the far corner. After it is Kevin Stevens. And that is assuming that the Penguins, uh, of course, uh, well, win or lose, as I said, uh, when they come home tonight. And I'm sure the uh, fans are responding back in Pittsburgh right now. Holding on. Here we go again. They led 1 nothing in the game three and held on to win it. Can they hold on again, Paul? They're up 6 5. Well, you know, been a, a different hockey game. Uh, the Penguins got spectacular goaltending. We've seen good goaltending at both ends here uh, tonight. Uh, Dominic Hasek in particular. Just like I said between periods after we talked to Ronnie Francis, you know, the Penguins are a team like most championship teams. They can play it any way you want. And we thought that in a shootout, they would have a much better chance of winning the hockey game. Of course, we didn't account for the fact that Dominic Hasek would stand on his ear. For much of this game until the Penguins finally broke through with that goal by Larry Murphy and then another one by Ronnie Francis, which is the difference right now. Six to five, four, 14 to go in the third. Well, Faceoffs now, everyone is magnified a hundred times uh, more than normal because Noonan and Trottier step in with time becoming a factor. Four, 14 left. Penguins win it. And around to the near side, shouldering uh, Marchman is Rick Tockett and the pen's clear. Larry Murphy has the puck. And Murphy comes up the center circle. Now to the left side, Trottier is offside. He uh, was ahead on the play when he took the pass. The puck must precede the man into the zone, and that was not the case. Trotty was across the line when he received that pass. And that negates it. Well, Mario Lemieux with a three-point night uh, for the Penguins. Kevin Stevens has three. And that's the cup that Lord Stanley donated to the National Hockey League back in 1893. Well, it wasn't to the NHL. He, had, he donated it to be awarded to the amateur champion, hockey champion in Canada, and it really wasn't used by the NHL until much later. Igor Kravchuk now passing over to Chris Chelios, and Kravchuk gets it back, and he'll deal it in behind the Penguin net. Barrasso gets the puck, moving around their side. Ronick 
Back to the center point of Chelios of Chicago. Shoots it. Went right in front of the net, but uh, bounced wide of Barrasso. And the Penguins now feed it ahead to center to Ronnie Francis. And he'll poke it through into the Chicago near corner. We are approaching three and a half minutes left in regulation. 6-5 Pittsburgh. And Chelios rambling through. Bork trying to shut him down for the Penguins, but Chelios stuffs it back into the Penguins' on. McKechnie was upended on the play by Stefan Mato. He got hurt on that play, but a late whistle here as we had an offside call against Chicago. And so we tick it down. 6-5 pins on the Penguins Hockey Network. Ford has great news this summer. Now everybody gets employee pricing, so you pay what we pay. That could mean up to $15,000 in price adjustments. Plus, we're inviting you to take the Drive One Challenge, because we believe once you drive a Ford, you won't want to drive anything else. With employee pricing, there's no better time to buy a Ford. Get your employee price at your local Ford store. So come in today. This offer ends soon. Friday on Real Classics. I just haven't gotten the break I need. You have an opportunity here. You might call it the opportunity of a lifetime. I want ownership. Part of the media rights, the gambling revenues, the works. How many times are you going to have to get your head handed to you? Sooner or later, they're going to kill somebody. The man wants a show, man. I guess we'll have to give him one. Chris Klein, LL Cool J, and Rebecca Romaine star in the real classic Rollerball. Only on ESPN Classic. New Bud Light Lime. The easy drinking taste of Bud Light with a splash of 100% natural lime flavor. Bud Light Lime, now available in Canada. Hey, it's Montana's Double Your Dinner Summer. Sure is, kid. Just order our famous pork ribs or new chicken or salmon entrees and get a free entree on your next visit. You can say that again. Okay, and get a free entree. Double Your Dinner Summer. So good, it's worth repeating. Escape to Montana's. Penguins won a game against Chicago in here this year. Tied a game at Pittsburgh and won the first game uh, on the road in this final series. And they lead the series three games to none, trying to close it out and get the Stanley Cup for the second time in the history of this franchise. And wrist it back of the Chicago net, and Dirk Graham will take it. Dirk Graham with three first period goals for the Blackhawks. The hat trick. 6-5 the score. Graham carries the puck to the Penguin line. Down the right side against Ulf Samuelson. Shoots it right to the net. Barrasso able to stop that. The rebound pulled in by Murphy of the Pens. On to Yager. Yager to the left side of the Chicago end. Pulls it around. Buskus comes for the net. He makes the move away from that goal now. Still being pressured by Brian Marchman. Yager turns away from him. Still controlling the puck. And shoots it behind the goal to Lemieux. Takes the biscuit. Lemieux turns around. What's he going to go with it? Smith is on him. The Penguins dazzling people with the moves they're making. Look at Lemieux dance with that puck. Mario near side. Deloney shoots it. Glove by goaltender Hasek. And he holds for a faceoff. It's showtime here at Chicago Stadium. Unbelievable. And Lemieux and Yager looking like the uh, like Michael Jordan. On, yeah, an old <laughs> vaudeville act uh, putting it on. Magic. There must be something in the air in this building. Look at Lemieux handle the biscuit here between the legs. Thank you. Still has it. It's phenomenal. Two minutes and 34 seconds left. Please believe me when I talked about this. As, as great a player as Ronick and, and the people we've talked about, Stevens and other people, Lemieux just even gets a step above that and what he can do with the puck. The Penguins are blessed with some great players on this squad, and so are the Blackhawks. And now we have 234 left in regulation. 6-5. The Penguins lead. The Hawks will give everything they have to try and tie this game. And try and force a uh, possible overtime or even win it in regulation. The Penguins won a game late with only 13 seconds to go at Pittsburgh in game one. Remember, it can be done. Grimson shoots it, and that one took off on him. Went right up into the seats. Holy goodness. Grimson firing from outside the blue line, and he got a uh, shot that took off and hit a fan. Man. I wouldn't want to play golf with him with a one iron the way he shot that. He missed the net by 35 feet. Say, when he stood at the tee, I'd get about seven miles away from him. <laughs> all the way back. He's dangerous. Tom <laughs> Barrasso staring in.
He's reeled off 10 straight. Now the Pens, you know, not only have won 10 straight, but other also in this playoff year, they have also had a four-game winning streak, if you remember. Well, they've had two good streaks. And this one trying to tie an NHL record, but they've not there yet to win the Stanley Cup. They're 2-11 away from it if they can hold on. And the Hawks lose it inside the Penguin uh, line. Murphy shoots it down the left wing boards. That's deep into Chicago real estate. And Steve Smith will get a handle on it. And we get an icing call against the Penguins. It won't be easy, believe me. Tockett put his arms around Larry Murphy. The Penguins can feel it right now, but whether or not they can accomplish the feat remains to be seen. Well, there aren't many teams who play with poise under fire the way the Penguins do. They're just amazing at it, and they've learned the hard way, particularly in this playoff year, starting when they were faced with elimination against the Washington Capitals. Van Hello and the referee picks up some debris off the uh, ice and the crowd in Chicago will be behind this club right down to the very end and Brian Noonan Robbie Brown and Dirk Graham will be up front with Steve Smith and Rod Buskus paired as the two defensemen the Penguins will counter with Trottier out here against Noonan love you and Francis Penguins put three center icemen out here Murphy has the puck in the draw he is hit by Robbie Brown but does turn it up the boards but that out gets it back again and Murphy's going to softly send it back into Chicago ice. They rule Buskus could have played it. No icing. Buskus will be back to take command of it to the right of his own net. 145 left here in regulation. Robbie Brown cuts through traffic down the right wing. Lemieux trying to slow him down. Knocks him off his skates. Play goes on. Mario's got the puck. It goes up now to Steve Smith. The backhand's one wide. Still kept in the zone. And Larry Murphy he turns it up to Lemieux. Back two on one with Bork. Lemieux left side of the Chicago end goes to Bork, but he couldn't take the pass. He was going down that right wing. A left-handed shot, and he wants to get off now, I think. As he pulls back and it goes to the near corner. No Bork will stay on, but he just couldn't take that pass from Lemieux. Chelios forced back into his own end, and a good score checking effort by Troy Loney. 1.15 to go in regulation. Will Hasek come off here? Chelios shoots it in, and Dominic Hasek stays in the net. Around the far boards, Bork of the Penguins trying to clear out of his own end. Remember, the Penguins have scored six empty net goals this uh, playoff year. 1.02 to go, and they do not pull Hasek as the puck's back to center. Now onto the Penguins' own, and after a Goulet. Knocked down by Shell Samuelson. Tom Barrasso skates over to get the puck. The Penguins, 53 seconds away. Hasek goes off the ice right now. They put the extra attacker on. It'll be Brent Sutter. Goulet and the Penguins in, trying to center. Behind the net it goes. Brent Sutter, put it in front. Rooney goes to the left point to Kravchuk of the Hawks. Now back in behind the net. The pass right up the boards to Barrasso when he pulls it in with that glove and holds on with 39.3 seconds left in regulation. That's all the Penguins are away right now from winning a Stanley Cup once again. Right, those will seem like three hours and, and nine minutes before it's all done, believe me. Pittsburgh six, Chicago five, and one of these two teams is going to call a timeout right now, I believe. Well, it started off high scoring. Yager scored a minute 37 into the uh, contest. Nobody did call timeout, so they are reserving that maybe for a later moment. And the Hawks will keep the extra man on. Hassan came off. And the Penguins will use the same three players. This crowd comes to life here. They stand in mass, standing room only. You can see it when they open the doors. They run up the stairs, which is about 10 levels up here where we're broadcasting from tonight. Full speed. They get a standing room only space, if you will, when they come into this building. It's absolutely something to behold. It would kill me to do it, <laughs> but they are amazing. Here's the situation. Face off. Penguins in to the right of Tom Barrasso. Ryan Trottier, Mario Lemieux, Ron Francis, Alt Samuelson, and Larry Murphy that buys them off of the fence, plus Barrasso. Brent Sutter, Graham, Goulet, Ronick, Larmer, and Chelios. Chelios planted at the left point. The face off will be in the left wing circle, and Trottier turns around as the linesman, Scampanello. Trying to get people settled in. They drop the puck. Who's going to get it? Murphy throw it in behind his own net. Hope Samuelson's after it. Empty net down to our right. Played up off the boards, but not out. Steve Armour waited up a leg, and it carries back to the Chicago zone. 28 seconds left. Chelios pulls back. He'll get it to Ronick. No, went right by. Trottier has it. Trying to go to the empty net, and he can't do it. 22 seconds left here in regulation. Chelios steps up. He'll pass to Brent Sutter. Penguins lead 6-5. 
Roenick with the puck into the Penguins and dance around one man shoots it but he missed the net 13 seconds left Trottier golf it up Lemieux's got the puck and he can't get it out right in front of Flexen oh what a save by Barrasso right up the play and Mugule right in front five seconds to go loose around to the far corner two seconds the Penguins are going to win the Stanley Cup I believe Stelio shoots it blocked the Penguins have won the Stanley Cup oh Lord Stanley Lord Stanley get me the brandy The Pittsburgh Penguins have won the Stanley Cup. Mike Keenan shaking hands with Scotty Bowman. But the Penguins mob Tom Barrasso as they hold on. I'm telling you, it was that close to being a tie game. Goulet almost tied it for the Chicago Blackhawks as the Penguins celebrate behind the Penguin goal. Look at Tommy Barrasso, second straight year. Steve Lant, the Pins equipment manager, hugging him. And Larry Murphy, a big uh, squeeze in on Scotty Bowman. And I know somewhere, somebody looking down by the name of Badger Bob Johnson is watching this and enjoying it with all the emotion that he carried to the Penguin squad last year. Unbelievable feeling again for the Pittsburgh Penguins to win the Stanley Cup for the second consecutive year. And they do it by reeling off 11 straight wins in the playoffs tying a record set by Chicago this year. Lemieux calling for his teammates to come over. Here we go. Of the Penguins. I wonder Bob whether this is the last time Mr. Ziegler will have the honor of doing this. With all kinds of consternation about his employment. Well we're picking up the feed of the Hockey Night in Canada right now so our apologies to you but here are the Penguins now surrounding that uh, Stanley Cup. They'll go for a skate here. At the stadium in Chicago, they've got more wires out there than you could imagine. This is absolutely a, a great thrill. It really is, no matter if it happens once, twice, three, four, five times. Look at Scotty Bowman with a big smile, giving a great big hug to Rick Talking right now. And there goes Lemieux, carrying the Stanley Cup around. It'll come back to Pittsburgh. And we will have a big day somewhere to celebrate this moment, believe me. And everybody in western Pennsylvania, and if you're a Penguin fan from wherever you are, you are invited to come down and be a part of the celebration. Rick Tockett holds it high. Bob Airy, who did not play in game three. <laughs> They're jumping over the television wires now as they come around. Shell Samuelson holds it for the first time ever in his career at 6-6, and nobody's going to get it from him reaching up. Troy Loney has it. Well, the Penguins showing an awful lot of character in this playoff year, and even in this game tonight, uh, winning it once again in the third period against Chicago. Phil Bork. Well, the Pens have a little bit of history. I don't know if they won the Cup once, but twice, and a lot of these players were with the team last year. And Larry Murphy has that Cup over his head. And Big Artie lets out that roar that only he can do as he holds it. And there is Yarmy Yager. Two years of the National Hockey League, two-time champion, 20 years of age. Brian Trottier, Mario Lemieux. Boys will be boys, and they're going to have some fun. Everybody being a part of it all, winning the Stanley Cup. With their second consecutive championship, the Penguins became the first team since the 1983 New York Islanders to record a four-game sweep in the finals. Once dubbed the City of Champions, Pittsburgh was quite proud of Conn Smythe winner Mario Lemieux and his mates, as Jimmy Roberts explains in his Vintage Sports Center report from 1992. With a second consecutive championship, now Pittsburgh's cup runneth over. Indeed, this is a town which has known its share of champions. From Stargell to Bradshaw, Pittsburghers are not easily impressed. Still, you take all the athletes in the last 20 years who have played in Pittsburgh and walk them all down Grant Street, 10 yards apart, Lemieux gets the most people after. No doubt about it. Certainly the biggest stars understand that a championship calls attention to the way this once maligned city feels about itself. You look at this city, you see a great work ethic. You see a great pride in the things that they do here. Uh, they may not be glamorous, but they work. 
It once was the third sport in a two-sport town. But now when the people of Pittsburgh look at their penguins, they like what they see. They like what they see because when they look at their penguins, they see a little bit of themselves. Reporting from Pittsburgh, I'm Jimmy Roberts, ESPN. We hope you enjoyed this presentation of the Pittsburgh Penguins 6-5 victory in Game 4 to complete their sweep of the 1992 Stanley Cup Finals. I'm Mike Gleason. Thanks for watching ESPN Classic. ESPN Classic celebrates a silver anniversary with a look back at the events and personalities that have shaped TSN into Canada's sports leader. TSN 25 Week begins Monday only on ESPN Classic. You're watching ESPN Classic.